Let's look at a couple unique ways to tap into the power of markers in Storyline. A lot of times we see markers used as a way to add clickable callouts to images on your slides, and that's really cool, but how about this? Another idea is to use them to create a really clean and simple process interaction like we see here. In this example, I've got these four steps, and I want my learners to be able to notice the order in which the steps are performed. And so rather than use an icon or a symbol, on my markers, I've used these numbers, and that way it's super clear to the learner the order in which the steps need to happen. And by doing it this way, the slide itself can stay nice and uncluttered because the learner can kind of uncover each step in turn. They're not going to be all overwhelmed by trying to take in all the details about the entire process all at once. In fact, to contrast what we see here with this other version of exactly the same content, here we see a lot of text kind of smashed onto the slide and it you know just kind of makes you want to put your head down on your desk, right? But our marker version in Storyline is so much easier to take in. It's arranged a little differently, a little more graphically, and it's a lot more explorable thanks to the markers. So here's what this project looks like in Storyline. These little images here that represent each step, these are just simple graphics that I dropped onto my slide using the Insert Picture tool. And all I did to create the markers was come up to the Insert tab and then choose Marker. And we've got tons of symbols to choose from, uh, but check these numbers out here. There are up to 20 numbers that you can use to create a really nice process interaction. So once you pick the number that you want to use, you just click on your slide to add it, and then you can move it around or position it or change the way the label opens. You can also resize stuff, and then you can get right to work customizing your content. Now, one thing that I did on this particular project is change the size and color of the text a little bit. And you can do that too. Let me just type some text here and I'll show you. You can select the text and then come up to the Home tab and you'll see all the tools you're used to using for text boxes. So if you wanted to maybe change the font or the size, you can do that. You can also you know, adjust the color or even um, other things like the, you know, the way the text is centered. So it's very easy to make it look just the way you want. I want to show you another kind of cool idea, and that is to use markers to construct a timeline interaction. Again, these markers just make it easy to distill a ton of content all into one tidy little slide so the learner can explore, you can show media, you can show text, you can show pictures, um, you can even show hyperlinks here like we see on this one. So if you're building a timeline like this, um, one thing to keep in mind is that you might want all your markers and labels to have kind of the same look and feel. And if that's the case for you, here's a couple of tips. You might have noticed by default that when you insert a new marker on your slide, it looks something like this, kind of this default blue color. And if you go through and customize things, you know, you can change things with the format tab and alter the colors and stuff like I did. But that's a lot of work if you have a lot of markers. So what you can do is when you've done it to one, you can right click on that marker and then choose set as default marker. And now if I insert another marker, it's going to look like the one that I chose as my default. And if I insert it on my slide, see how the label and the border match the default that I chose. So that's kind of a nice time saver. We can also control the fonts that are used too, so that we don't have to make those changes every time. So up here in the design tab, we've got this fonts drop down. You can see right now I'm using um, a set of theme fonts called Timeline that I created, but it's really easy to set up your own theme fonts. You just click this option here, create new theme fonts, and on this pop-up, you specify what font you want to use for headings and body text, and that's what gets used for the title and the description of all of your markers in your project. So you can go to eLearning Heroes and check out our tutorial on theme fonts if you need a little bit more help with that. So have fun exploring new ways to you know, use markers to build your process interactions and your timeline interactions. We really look forward to seeing what you create.